Hey y'all, so this is video one and it's where I'm going to teach you about conducting your basic patterns, which is the 1-1, one, 2-4, one, 3-4, four, four, and 4-4. Four, four. Alrighty, so the first thing we need to talk about is finding your, um, your stance, I guess you could call it that initial pose, that like resting spot where you're gonna start, finish, that like home base of your conducting patterns. So the way I was taught is I want you to hug the barrel. Just, see, there we go. You're gonna hug the barrel and then you're gonna turn your wrist out. Make sure your palms are up, your fingers are curved. You want to make sure that your palms are up that way even the percussion back there on like the backyard line can still see our hands can still follow the beat Okay, so we've hugged the barrel. We've turned our wrist out curved our fingers and then I want you to break the elbow Get that nice Because that angle right there Because most of the motion of your conducting comes from your elbow this is where most of the magic will happen. Ooh. So, so, alrighty, barrel, wrist, break the elbow. Now you should be in a comfortable position where your uh, elbows are slightly outside of your shoulders. Can you kind of see what I'm talking about? And your wrists are in line with your shoulders, like it should be like a, you know what I'm saying? Alrighty. Now, we're going to move on to the 1-1, one, one, or 1-4, one, whatever it is. Sorry, I don't really know what this one is technically called. So, we go to home base, which we just found. And then, actually, before I talk about that, I want to talk to you about your box, which is as low, as far out, and as high as your pattern will go. So, for example, my bottom of my box is right about at my waist. My hands, my ictus, my beak plane, where my hand stops, is never going to hit below here. Because if I drop it any lower, then the people on like the very back of the football field won't be able to see it. So, right about here is where I tend to keep my beak plane. Um, I don't tend to bring my arms out past here just because this right here is comfortable for me. I think if I were to go super big, it would make my chest, my arms hurt a lot more, my shoulders especially. So I tend to keep it right about here. And then this is about the top of my beat plane. I tend to go a little higher when I conduct louder. That's how I showed my um, dynamics. If it was piano, I would conduct a little smaller. Mezzo forte, I would go a little bigger. And then especially with stand tunes, if I was excited, I wanted the band to get loud, I'd... You know? Gotta get into it. Okay, so that's our box. Honestly, just do whatever's most comfortable for you. A big part about conducting that people don't talk about is making sure we're not tight doing whatever is comfortable because you have to make it not only the 10 minutes of halftime, but the whole game, conducting stand tunes, pre-game, everything. It's gonna take a lot out of you, you're gonna develop a lot of muscles, but whatever you can do to help yourself, especially those like, that closer, when you gotta push through, keeping all of this loose in the beginning, you're gonna thank yourself for it later. Okay, so we found, we hugged the barrel, Hands turned out, wrist, fingers, broke the elbow. Our, now we're going to talk about one, one. So that's just your plane. One, 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 one. We're just going nice and steady. I'm hitting my beat plane and I'm going right back up. I'm barely, you know how when you touch the water with like the tip of your finger, like a pool or a pond, and the water just kind of ripples? But if you splash it, it goes like whoosh. We're trying to get the ripple. Even when we're going fast, we're just touching the water so it ripples. Okay? 
So let's get comfortable. So we're touching the water, it's rippling. We're never going below our beat plane. A big problem I have is your fingers. Tape those fingers together if you have to. We don't want this, we want this. A nice, pretty, conducting hand. Hands, hands, sorry. My pinkies have a tendency to go out. I think that's totally fine because it's little, you don't really notice it, but if, this is bad. So just, okay, one, one, sorry. One, 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 one. Okay, next I'm going to talk to you about two, four, oh, okay. <laughs> that's basically one, one with an extra bead, obviously. So this one is you're going to keep that one, but this time you're going to push out for two. Don't go super far out. You want to keep this nice angle, I guess you call it. Yeah. One, two is just down, out, in, up, down, out, in, up, down, out, in, up. Again, find your beat plane, stay inside your box. You want to be comfortable. Notice how my elbow is doing most of the work. My shoulder isn't going up and down. It's not doing the... This isn't, this isn't what we want. We want that nice. Down, in, up, down, out, in, up, down, out, in, up, down, out, in, up. See what I'm saying? Good. Now we're gonna talk about three, four, oh. <laughs> so this again is two, four, just with an extra beat. So this one is probably the trickiest one, or it was for me to get, just because it was so awkward. Um, but again, just like with the rest of these, the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it, the more comfortable you'll be with it, and the cleaner your pattern's gonna look. So, three, four. So we're gonna find our position, hug the barrel, wrist out, fingers, broke the elbow, we're comfortable. This one we're gonna go, we're gonna start up here, go one, go about halfway up. That's the and of one. Then we're gonna hit back down to that ictus again. That's two, push out. That's the and of two, in is three. So it's basically two, four, just with that little bounce put in. Which is why I think it was the most tricky for me to learn, just cause I got it confused with two, four a lot. So let's do it slow, slow. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so it's down, yeah. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. One and two and three. Take it slow. Count out loud if you need to. I really recommend counting out loud at first to really just get in the feel of it. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one. That was great. I bet you're doing really great right now. I bet I'm a great teacher. No, I wouldn't go that far. But I really do think that you're probably picking up fast. Um, yeah. So the next pattern is the one that you're definitely going to use the most. Um, most halftime shows are going to be written in a mix of four and three, maybe with a couple two fours thrown in. Mostly two fours are just used for like quick changes. You, it'd be like. For example, in a uh, Hey Y'all, my junior year, it was like, da 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 It was like a quick, it was only one measure. But 4-4 four, four is gonna be like your home pattern. Um, you're gonna use it for stand tunes, pregame, most of your halftime, all that fun stuff. So, let's talk about it. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, this is so weird. Okay, that's why I'm not a teacher. So we're gonna find our one one. Now you can do four four in two different ways. I I'm gonna teach you the first way, which is how I learned it initially, which is how I teach all newbie drum major wannabes how to do it. And it's where you keep your ictus in the same spot. That down, in, out, up. It's where your hand's always going to go to when you're conducting. It's going to be that same spot. Okay? Now this pattern is 3-4 just with an end beat thrown in, which you're going to get in a second when I show it to you. So, so sorry. Okay. So this one we're going to go down, up, down, we're going to go halfway back up, just like in the 3-4. But instead of going out, we're going to push in. And we're going to kind of make like a Hershey kiss with our fingers, except with a little separation. This is called low delta, but that's a little fancy, so you don't have to worry about knowing that. Okay? So it's one and two and, remember we went in, and then you're going to push out like you're swimming and go out for three, or and of three, in for four. Okay, let's do it slowly. One and two and three and four. Down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. Up, up. Okay, that's the part A or pattern A, pattern A. Okay, and the next one, the way I do it, the way I think some other drum major candidates do it because they've seen me do it this way or that's just how they were taught, is where your ictus moves. It's the same down, in, out, up, just your ictus goes from one, two, out, three, in, four. <clears throat> Sorry. So if you want to learn it that way, it's totally fine. The other way is totally cool too. This is how you do pattern B. So down, in, push, out, up, down, in, push, out, up, down, in, push, out, up, down. So that's one, one, two, four, three, four, 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 A and B. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, quick rehash of everything hug the barrel, hands out, fingers, curve those fingers. Don't do this. I don't want to see this. Curve those fingers, break the elbow. Have a nice one, 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 two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. What's most important when conducting patterns is making sure your beats are clear, okay? You wanna make sure the piccolo and the back 10, the trumpet on the front 45, the percussion who are on the back cash, and the clarinet straggler who's over there. You wanna make sure everybody can see your pattern and everybody can tell what beat you're on. I recommend doing something kinda like what I'm doing right now, make a video of yourself, get a friend to video you, stand in front of a mirror, do whatever you can so you can see yourself conducting and that way you can do self critiques. Because if you can read your pattern, chances are other people can read your pattern. So, good luck.